Salutations, Crustaceans. I'm Lobster, and today we are going to be reviewing the FGN Mighty Jazz Dark Evolution 5-String. Let's do it. This is the Mighty Jazz Dark Evolution 5-String from FGN Guitars. Regular watchers of the channel definitely know the name FGN, as we have looked at quite a few of their bases, and I am a big fan of what they're doing. Big shout out and thank you to Kevin, the Beard of Doom, for sending me this bass to review. I really appreciate it. Now, we have already reviewed the four-string version of this bass, and I gave it a 5 out of 5 claw rating for its excellent balance, great tone, awesome playability, and just everything about it was superb. It's one of my favorite basses in my stable, and I've had it for over two years now, and that one is not going anywhere. However, this is the five-string model, and there are some big differences between this and other five-strings, which we will be going over shortly. But for a more in-depth look at the four-string model, be sure to check out that review linked in the description below. Just like the four-string, we have an ash body and a maple neck with a maple fingerboard. Now this ash body here is painted in a Mopar purple. This is a limited edition finish that is no longer available. And I think it contrasts nicely with the black hardware, pick guard, and pickups. This is a very good looking bass. Now the Mighty Jazz has actually been updated and there's a new JMJ2 model, which has the truss rod adjustment at the heel of the neck on the body versus at the headstock. And I believe the headstock is painted as well. There might be some other minor differences, but overall uh, the specs are relatively the same, and I think that this review can apply to that base as well. Especially for the EMG model here, the Dark Evolution, which remains virtually unchanged outside of the finish options. I know for the Seymour Duncan version, they have changed the push-pull to be a series parallel for the bridge pickup, just like the mod we did with the Bartolini, where originally the push-pull is a series mode for both pickups, but I'm getting off topic here. So we have a nice limited edition Mopar purple on this ash body, EMG pickups, the jazz pickup in the neck position, this is the active jazz, and the MMTW pickup in the bridge position, the five-string model. Just like the four-string, we have the same volume-volume tone configuration with the uh, tone control being a push-pull for the coil switching on the bridge pickup. Moving on to the neck, this is a 24-fret maple-on-maple neck, 34-inch scale, with a 47-millimeter nut width. This is a U-shaped neck, and it is very chonky, so if you are looking for a slimmer neck profile, you should probably look elsewhere, as this is a very fat neck. Now, the only other 5-string that I've played that has a wider neck than this is my MTD over here. However, the asymmetrical neck profile paired with the 47.5mm nut width makes for a very nice playing experience, a really nice one. However, the U-shaped neck profile on this bass makes it a bit more challenging. Up at the headstock, we see the FGN logo, and we see the 5 Godo tuners here. Opposite the tuners, I forgot to mention the bridge, this is the same style Sung 2 BB bridge. This is the BB405 as opposed to the 404 uh, on the 4 string, and it's one of my favorite bridges. You find these also on the Reverend guitars, and I just think that they're high quality and you're able to string through the body, string through the bridge, uh, they look good, they're decently high mass, and I've had no problems with them. Some people have mentioned that uh, it sort of wears away at the finish if you're changing strings and it's kind of rubbing against some, some of the finish inside, like the string ferrule hole, but like, that's small potatoes, so not, not a big deal. <laughs> Anyways, let's go ahead and turn this bass around. Now upon first glance, there's really not a lot going on back here, but upon second inspection, there is a lot of attention to detail, which is worth noting. At the bottom, we see the five string ferrules, allowing you to string through the body, which we've done here with our stay in tune, nickel plated uh, 45 to 125 strings, the SIT foundations. We also have a battery compartment, allowing us to easily swap our 9 volt battery. This has a quick release door, very nice touch. And then the neck heel, this is a five screw neck attachment, very, very stable, and a contoured neck heel as well. The neck for this bass is made specifically for this body, as all FGNs are, from what I understand. And the neck heel, right where the neck meets the body, everything is just so smooth. There's no, like, squared off bit. 
It just is smooth right up to where the neck meets the body. It's perfect. We can also see the back of this maple neck, and it is a satin finish, very easy to navigate. And up at the headstock, we see the Godo tuners once again. Now, how much does the FGN Mighty Jazz Dark Evolution weigh? This particular example comes in at 10 and a half pounds, which is a bit on the heavy side. My four string model is nine pounds. However, my four string regular Mighty Jazz, the non-Dark Evolution model, which we recently modded, is heavier at 10 pounds. So it looks like these can vary in weight quite a bit. And how much does the FGN Mighty Jazz Dark Evolution five string go for brand new? You can buy these new in the US now and they're available through several retailers. And you can also purchase them from Japan through Kurosawa Gaki, which is where I got my four string model from. Um, the Dark Evolution at least, and uh, plenty of other shops over there sell them. And I believe that's where you can get some of these limited finishes. However, the new updated model is available in the US directly again from, you know, US retailers, and those come in at $13.49. Now for those who don't know, FGN guitars are handmade, CNC assisted, in Japan. And the high quality standard there is just phenomenal. All the basses that I've played from FGN have just been absolutely superb. Now one other thing unique to FGN is their fretting system. This is called the circle fret system. These frets are not completely straight. Instead, they're almost C-shaped towards the nut, just ever so slightly. Here's a picture from FGN basically showing what the whole CFS or circle fret system is all about. It says it improves intonation and tone and whatnot. I mean, they all say that. However, from an intonation standpoint, I can definitely see what they're doing. Um, very interesting touch there. And it's hard to tell, but like if you look at it, you can definitely see a little bit of a curvature on some of the frets. It's neat. <laughs> but I know you're all wondering, what does this bass sound like? You all know what you need to do. Go ahead and pinch that like button so my hand will turn back to normal. Thanks. So that is the FGN Mighty Jazz Dark Evolution 5 string. And for a 34 inch scale bass, the B string is quite solid on this. Check it out. Very nice definition in that B string for a 34 inch scale bass. Something that you usually don't see, especially on a Fender-ish style instrument, sometimes you get kind of a weak B string on those. However, I attribute that to the high quality construction and solid neck attachment here. <laughs> I am no expert though, that's just what I think. But anyways, let's go ahead and check out this bass in a little bit more detail. So what you've heard thus far is both pickups together at 100% and the tone at 100%. Let's start out by soloing the neck pickup, this EMG Jazz pickup. This is the EMG J5, it's an active pickup, and here's what it sounds like. This is just 
fun to play. I did mention the neck profile is a bit on the chunky side, and I definitely stand by that. I wish it was a bit more, I guess, C-shape as opposed to U-shape, especially with this 47 millimeter nut width. This is a chunky neck and is definitely not for everybody. However, it still has the same just like, super smooth finish on the back of the neck making this bass just such a joy to play. So you really don't notice it too much unless you're doing long playing sessions where you might get a little bit of hand fatigue. At least I did. Balance wise though, this balance is great on the lap and on a strap as well. Hey, that rhymes. <laughs> so we have the neck pickup soloed. Let's take the tone down to about 50% now. <laughs> And here's the tone all the way down. Very nice, very nice. I mean, these are just standard EMG controls here. There's, you know, no special sauce in regards to the electronics other than the EMG special sauce, which I absolutely enjoy in this combo. And this neck pickup definitely can get some P bass like growl. Um, you can definitely get uh, in that territory tonally. So this is a very flexible instrument overall. Let's go ahead and turn the tone back up and solo our bridge pickup. So what we have here is the MMTW five string model. This is just like the four string where we have the push pull tone knob here to go between a humbucker and a single coil mode. It's not a true single coil, but it's more of like a stacked humbucker. So you get a more nasally tone as both bits of the humbucker are right by the bridge versus being spread out like a music man. So let's start out with the tone at 100% and the pickup in humbucker mode. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the tone at 50%. And here is the tone all the way down. Very nice, very nice. Now one thing I'm noticing is the B string definition is definitely much stronger over on the bridge pickup. I think that's true with any instrument, but it's very noticeable on 34 inch scale instruments in my opinion. And uh, you definitely notice a little bit more kick or a little bit more just clarity on the B versus a little bit more muddiness on the uh, neck pickup versus the bridge. Anyways, now let's take the tone back up all the way and pull our tone control to engage our stacked humbucker, or, you know, single coil mode for the bridge pickup. Let's see if we can hear a difference in the character. Big difference in output with the humbucker mode being a lot stronger. Let's uh, check that out in reverse. Interesting. So that 
that was the tone at 100% with the tone control pulled out engaging our stacked humbucker. Let's turn the tone down to about 50 now. And here's the tone all the way down. Next, let's turn our tone back up all the way, push the control back in, and bring our neck pickup back into the mix, and have both pickups on together with the tone up all the way. Now let's see if we can hear the difference on the two bridge pickup modes with the neck pickup in the mix as well. That is a very big difference. You get the higher output on the Music Man style humbucker configuration versus with the tone control pulled out. And you definitely get a more jazz bassy type of tone when you have the tone control pulled out as well and it's in a stacked humbucker mode. So I guess that's somewhat similar to uh, what's going on in the bridge pickup just all the time. So uh, yeah, you definitely get more of a jazz bassy feel. Next, with both pickups enabled and the bridge pickup in humbucker mode, let's take the tone down to about 50%. <laughs> and with the tone at 50%, let's engage our single coil mode again. And then let's take the tone down all the way, push the tone control in, bridge pickup in humbucker mode, tone all the way down. And let's pull the tone knob and have our bridge pickup in the stacked humbucker single coil mode. <laughs> okay, let's uh, go ahead and engage the humbucker mode one more time, turn the tone back up, and let's grab our pick. So this is both pickups enabled bridge and humbucker mode. And here is the bridge pickup in the single coil mode. So there's definitely a big difference in the character of the bass, both with finger style and with a pick when you're toggling between the bridge pickup modes. Now let's just negate the bridge pickup entirely and have our neck pickup soloed with a pick. <laughs> Thank you.
<laughs> wow, I really like the sound of the neck pickup with a pick. It sounds very growly and aggressive. Ooh, yeah, listen to that. Listen to that. So this is a great sounding instrument, but we still haven't covered one thing, and that is, how does she slap? Let's bring both pickups back into the mix and have the tone at 100% and the bridge pickup in humbucker mode first. <laughs> with the bridge pickup in single coil mode. Bridge pickup in the single coil mode or stacked humbucker or whatever uh, sounds amazing slapped with the neck pickup in there as well. It just sounds like a mean modern jazz bass. <laughs> I guess that's what this is in the essence of things. Now, one more time, I'm going to solo the neck pickup, tone at 100%. One more slap. <laughs> Very nice, very nice. And then finally, let's go ahead and throw some drums behind this bass. So here are my final thoughts on the FGN Mighty Jazz Dark Evolution 5-string. I think that this is a killer instrument that is almost at the cusp of perfection. I think that the neck profile could be refined a little bit to be a bit more comfortable, and maybe narrowing the nut width just a smidge. That's just my opinion though, and again, everyone has their own preferences for neck profile. I think the 19 millimeter bridge spacing is a very nice feature and works out nicely on a bass like this, giving you a lot of room if that's what you're into. However, if you're looking for a bass with tighter string spacing, I would definitely look elsewhere, uh, like Schechter or Ibanez or something that offers something a bit tighter. Uh, but for someone looking for nice wide spacing, high quality components, uh, great specs and features with this 24 fret neck, you should definitely check out these FGNs. I find it almost comical how high fender prices are going for some made in Mexico models being more expensive than this bass here. So in regards to pricing, I think that this is a very competitive instrument and it has the features and specs to back it up as well. Again, my only gripes are probably the weight and the neck profile. It's not uncomfortable, I just think it could be refined a little bit more to be more comfortable. So what am I going to rate the FGN Mighty Jazz Dark Evolution 5-string? I'm gonna rate this bass... Four claws out of five. 
the price, the specs, the features, the playability, the fit and finish, everything about this bass is superb. And I think to make this a perfect instrument, I would refine the neck profile, and I just wish it was a little bit lighter. It's not a boat anchor by any means, but just shaving off like a pound would make this thing a lot more, uh, I guess, gig ready. At 10 and a half pounds, I wouldn't really want to hold on to this for, you know, an extended period of time on my shoulder. That's just me personally. Everyone, you know, has their own tolerances. <laughs> But anyways, I think that this is an awesome bass. It delivers tonally, it delivers in playability, and you should definitely check one of these out over a similarly priced Fender, because these basses deliver so much more for that money. Let me know what you all think about the FGN Mighty Jazz Dark Evolution down in the comments below. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, join our Discord channel, and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the FGN Mighty Jazz Dark Evolution 5-string. And as always, until we groove again.